ready to go. Ready to go. Uh, um, so welcome, so welcome everyone. This is the seventh uh, seminar of the third season of Good Vibes. And I'm, I'm glad to see so many of you still uh, attending these sessions. So today the speaker will be uh, Nuno Moedas. Uh, Nuno did his master's um, at the University of Porto here in Portugal. And then he went on to uh, pursue a PhD at the Institute for Astrophysics and Space Sciences uh, under the supervision of uh, Diego Bossini and Morgan Dale. Um, well, Nunu's work is mostly focused on the modeling of stars and their evolution with an emphasis on the study of chemical transport mechanisms. And so today we'll be telling us about the effect of turbulent mixing in F-type stars. So the floor is yours, Nunu, go ahead, and then we'll uh, we'll have the, the Q&A at the, at the very end, okay? Okay, thank you, Tiago. So, hello, everyone. So, first of all, I'd like to thanks to the organization to let me do this uh, seminar. So, I'm Nuno. I'm going to present a little bit the work I, I've been do, doing during my PhD in the investigation of, F, of the effects of turbid mixing in f -types. So, my work is focusing in, in study stars. Uh, which is the bricks of our, our universe, and knowing them help us from the characterization of exoplanets to to know more about the evolutionary story of our, our galaxy. And with the future mission that we will be launched, they will bring us new and more precise data. That tell, help us tell models that uh, that we use currently, and the aim of my uh, my work is to try to improve and develop the new generation of tools to characterize stars. So, I want to uh, to 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 do this, and my uh, my focus will be in, in in study the chemical composition because the chemical composition is one of the fundamental ingredients in the stellar model modeling, and. Uh, it, uh, it is not static, it changes over the, uh, the, st the star evolution because the, the nuclear reactions that occur in the core, they transform an element to another, and also the, um, due to the chemical transport mechanisms that change the chemical profile along the, along the, uh, the star. And my focus will be in the transport, uh, the transport mechanism because they also, if we want the more, more accurate ages, we need to include them because they don't, don't only change the chemical profile, but also change the abundance of the elements that are used in the nuclear reaction. So they will have a direct impact in, in the age that, uh, that the stars spent burning these elements. So I want to study the, the chemical evolution, and this can be described by this equation where they consider the, the effects of nuclear reactions and also the chemical transport mechanism. The, this uh, chemical transport me mechanism, there are a lot that can be implemented, for, that can be driven by rotations, mi convention, and a lot more mechanisms. But the main one that is used in stellar models and have presented very good results is atomic diffusion. But if we want to have the most accuracy, uh, accuracy in the stellar models, we need to introduce all these chemical transport mechanisms. However, we still don't know all the chemical transport mechanisms that uh, are inside the star, and, all, uh, and also we don't know how, how to model, uh, model them. And, uh, and also, if we want to include all these chemical transport mechanisms, the computation turns to uh, much, uh, computa is too much computational, uh, computational demanding and don't allow us to compute large uh, number of stellar models that are necessary to characterize stars. So we need to have a more efficient way to include all these chemical transport mechanisms. And a, lo a lot of these uh, mechanisms that are in competition with atomic diffusion can be parameterized by a, a simple co co diffusion coefficient, coefficient which, which is the turbulent missing. The, uh, and this coefficient can mimic the effects of adding this ke ke chemical transport mechanism. So, my, fo uh, my focus of my work will be in these two chemical transport mechanisms, atomic diffusion and the turbulent mix. So first of all, let's look at what is atomic diffusion. So atomic diffusion is a chemical transport mechanism that can be described by this equation, which is driven by the, their chemical, by thermal and, gradients that, uh, and pressure gradients that uh, 
are, uh, are inside the, the star and also the effects of the electric field. And in the pressure gradients, we can see the two main sub process of atomic. atomic which is relative oscillations and gravitational state. These two elements are levels of uh, where they are, which will lead to chemical accumulation zones for the different uh, for the different elements. So the, these two are differently where the uh, are different region of the star, but also they have other dependence, which is what uh, the, the, they depend in which element they are. So for different elements, we will, the atomic diffusion will create a chemical uh, chemical profile uh, different for, for each uh, element. And also, there is a problem, at least with relative oscillation, that its implementation, uh, implementation is too much uh, expensive, uh, expensive comp computationally. So we cannot, um, we we cannot use it to compute uh, the num the necessary number of uh, stellar models to characterize stars, and because of that, relative acceleration is is neglected in the stellar models, and only gravitational setting is considered. So let's see what uh, what uh, happened when we inc include atomic diffusion in the stellar model. So in here we can see the the kill diagram of the with some evolutionary tracks of some stars, where the color code indicates the iron content that uh, these stars have at the stellar surface. And we see for, for during the main sequence, the stars tend to deplete the surface until reach a minimum value of the iron content, which is the maximum deplet depletion uh, point that uh, these stars, uh, that, the, uh, that, that the surface reach during the main sequence. After this point, the star partially recovers the chemical composition uh, in the stellar surface, reaching uh, uh, reaching uh, cl valves close to the initial ones during the red giant stage. Now, this is when we only include gravitational setting. If we include a close radi relative acceleration, we, uh, we can see that there is an impact, not for the, for the, uh, the lower mass stars, the, which the evolution is very similar, but for the more massive stars, which uh, we see that for, like for 1.4 solar mass stars, we see that instead of having a depletion of the surface, we will reach, enrich the surface in the iron content uh, at the stellar surface. And the point that we see for these more massive stars is not the, the minimum value that we have, but the maximum value or ma the maximum amount that are, or the maximum variation that occurs during the main sequence. So the point that uh, indicates here is the maximum variation, maximum variation of iron content at the stellar surface. Nevertheless, after the, the, this point, the star still partially recovers the 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 the, 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 the abundance of the cell surface and will reach valves close to the initial ones during the red giant stage, which are very similar when we neglect the relative oscillations. When we neglect the relative oscillations, so this, now we can look for individual tracks and see how the in and they each one evolve uh, differently. We can look for one solar mass star, and we see that only gravitational setting, we see that uh, the star will uh, have a, a level of depletion, but adding relative acceleration, we see that, uh, uh, adding relative acceleration, we see that uh, the surface will be, uh, uh, the depletion of the surface will be attenuated. So adding relative acceleration will end up with a less depleted surface. However, in the stellar models, we, uh, the use of gra gravitational setting F Provided very good results in uh, very good results uh, results to characterize real stars of uh, re real stars of uh, solar, solar of solar type. So the problem of neglecting relative uh, relative oscillations is for the more massive stars, and we can look for 1.4 solar mass star. We see that only gravitational setting we will deplete the surface. However. With, uh, with on gravitational side, we reach valves of over depletion that are un unrealistic. So this indicates that it is necessary to add other, other chemical transport mechanisms. And one of them is relative acceleration. And we see that not only avoid the effects of over depletion, but also it will enrich the surface for, for the iron content. 
However, we still reach values of variations that are not expected for non-chemical food color stars, so still we still are missing other chemical transport mechanisms for, for to, to, to avoid these over variations that occur at the stellar star. Uh, we ne need to note that uh, the plot that uh, I show here is for iron content. However, uh, atomic diffusion acts differently for the different uh, elements. And we are showing for the iron content because the iron content is the main constraint you use from observations. If we want to constrain the chemical composition, we normally use the iron content. So we want the most accuracy in the evolution of the iron content. However, is the, the evolution will be different for the different elements, and we can see the global impact for the total metal aesthetic. And we see that even if we add the relative accelerations, the global impact of the total metallicity, we will end up with a depletion, a depletion of the surface and still reach valves of over, over depletion that are unrealistic. So, so we need to add other chemical transport mechanisms to avoid these old variations. And what I want to do is try to explore the possibility of adding a two red missing to avoid these over variations in the F type stars. Now, what is turbulent missing? Turbulent missing is a prescription that aims to parameterize the uh, all the effects, uh, all the effects from the, the different uh, chemical transport mechanisms that are in computation with atomic diffusion, and they do that by homogenizing part of the relative region that are right below of the convective envelope, which will avoid uh, which will avoid part of the over variations because it will reduce the efficiency of atomic diffusion. Uh, we will reduce the efficiency of atomic diffusion. So we want to implement turret missing in MESA, and we follow and we implement the prescription described by Richard in 2000, which describes turret missing by this equation, where omega and n are two constants. This coefficient here is the diffusion coefficient for helium, and this one is the density at the at a certain re region. These two with the indices in this zero indicates. Uh, indicates that these parameters are incorporated at the reference depth, which indicates how much deep the effects of turbulent emission will reach inside the star. And in our case, uh, we use a, a reference mass envelope to, to indicate our, what, uh, what is our, our reference depth. So we implemented turbulent missing, and now we want to see the effects of turbulent missing in the stellar models. And for that, as a starting point, we use the calibration performed by Verma and Civil in 2019, where they use the, uh, the surface helium amanus to calibrate the efficiency of the wet missing by fitting the, the helium glitch in F5 stars. And uh, in, their, uh, in their work, they also use a reference mass for the reference depth, and they found this valve, uh, this, uh, this valve that, uh, that uh, in, the, in their calibration that uh, more realistic, uh, that can obtain more re realistically the helium amanus, the, yeah, uh, the helium amanus at the stellar uh, at the stellar surface. So now we want to see what happened when we had the turbulent missing, and here we can see the uh, the evolution of the uh, the amanus of, of helium and iron content at the stellar surface for the uh, for a model of 1.4 solar mass time, and we see. Without turbulent missing, with only atomic diffusion, we see that the for you the surface will be deple uh, depleted and reach valves of over depletion that are unrealistic. And adding turbulent missing, we can see that we can avoid the, the effects of over depletion and instead have a steady dec uh, decrease of this uh, of the harmonies of this element, which is more realistic. Now, if we look for other elements. We see that uh, for iron content, uh, we see that uh, we uh, reach over variations in a, over variations for for its amanus, and in this case, because of relative acceleration, we reach over uh, enrichment for non-chemical peculiar stars, and adding uh, adding turbulent missing, we not not only avoid these over variations, but also we obtain a steady decrease that. Is, uh, that is more expected uh, in, to observe in real stars. So, with the red mission, we can see that we can avoid the over variations caused, caused by atomic diffusion. Now, let's focus 
in, only in the study or, or only in the models with turbine mixing. And in, in, uh, and in the study of Fermi and Lagerhead, they only considered the effects of gravitational setting and neglected the effects of relative acceleration in their comp uh, in their in their calibration. So now what I want to see is what happened when I add relative acceleration. And here we can see that for for real, we don't see any effects in the in the surface because we expect that relative acceleration don't have any effect in the in this element. However, for iron content, we see that we will we'll, we'll end up with a le, uh, with a less depleted surface uh, with a less depleted surface than when we don't consider a, a relative acceleration. So, and the, this difference that we detect is more or less, is the order of the the current uh, the from the current uncertainties from the best uh, the, from the best observations for these elements. So. As iron content is the main constraint in, in, in stellar models, we want to have the most accuracy as possible to, uh, to model the, these elements. So we want to add the effects of relative acceleration in, in the, in the turbine missing. And we found that the, the, uh, adding the effects of relative acceleration in turbine missing is possible by increasing the efficiency of turbine missing. And we see we, 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 with this, we can. Re, uh, have a close evolution of the iron content with only to rent missing, with only to rent missing. However, we can reproduce the iron content, but for uh, for for the helium uh, for the helium phase, we see that adding the to rent missing will create a difference in the in the helium. However, this difference that we encounter is in, in uh, they, they are inside the error bars that are expected for these elements from pre previous works. So, we done this calibration for one, for the, this uh, for this stellar mass. Now we want to see if we can new, uh, do this calibration for for the different stellar mass stars for the different F type stars. So, for that we uh, we add the effects of relative acceleration for this uh, for this. Uh, for the for the stars, and we found that we can reproduce the evolution of the iron content with only to rate missing by increasing its efficiency uh, by its efficiency as the stellar mass increases, and we do this by increasing the the reference mass uh, the, uh, by increasing the reference mass with the stellar mass, and with this uh, with this we found that we can reproduce the the iron content, and this increase. Uh, it follows uh, a linear uh, a linear increase that we can uh, we fit it and found this expression for the uh, the reference mass. So now we we turbine missing we can reproduce the uh, we can reproduce the evo the, the evolution of of iron content uh, the evolution of iron content with gravitational setting and avoid avoid the over variations that are caused by atomic diffusion. However, it's necessary to note that this calibration was performed for relative oscillations in iron, so this is valid for iron, but may not be valid to, for the evolution of other chemical elements. And we can, uh, and we can see how this will affect uh, other elements. Uh, in here, we see the, the evolution of different elements. For the majority of them, the differences that we encounter are more or less ne negligible. However, for others, this is not true, especially for the case of uh, of calcium. We see that we, uh, with our calibration to to rate missing, we found uh, we found a depletion. However, we, when we add relative accelerations, we see that the, the when we add relative acceleration, the depletion of this element don't occur, and we expect to have a more constant amnes uh, a more constant amnes during the evolution during the main sequence of these stars. So. So oh, this indicates that for our calibration is uh, is not va va valid for uh, cannot be used for a chemical characterization of uh, of these stars. However, as we can reproduce very well the iron content at the, at the surface, which is the main constraint in the stellar models, we can still use this calibration for a more global characterization and try to obtain a more accuracy in the mass, radius, and age of these stars. And so now what what I want to do is to uh, now uh, 
uh, what I want to do is uh, to see how to rate missing performs in the inference of the global, pro uh, stellar, the global stellar properties of F types, or F type stars. And for that, I use MESA and I compute uh, uh, two stellar grids, uh, two stellar grids to, to characterize stars. Both, uh, both of these grids have the same parameters, uh, the, the same parameter space. The only difference is in the, in the stellar physics. Well, for the first grid, uh, we don't use the turbine missing and only use atomic, uh, only use atomic diffusion. However, we neglect uh, the phase of atomic diffusion for the stars, who, for the stars that we consider uh, that we consider that they have over depletion of the uh, of the over depletion of the su surface, and we select these stars not uh, as we uh, that is you you usually use by cutting us at a uh, atomic diffusion at a certain stellar mass. But we decided to explore how the the, uh, the maximum depletion evolves with, with the stellar mass, and we see that for the more massive stars, we encounter that the maximum depletion is worse. So is the maximum depletion is worse and reach values of over depletion. However, this only not depends on the stellar mass, and we see that it will depend also in the initial chemical composition. So we take the effects. Uh, the effects of the change in the chemical composition and change in the stellar mass, and we select which models or in which models we we need to neglect the effects of atomic diffusion for, for the first grid. For the case of the second grid, we use our, our calibration of the rate missing, and because of that, we use uh, atomic diffusion for all the cell uh, for all the cell models because uh, the rate missing will avoid the, the effects of over variation in this type uh, for the uh, for, for, for these stars. So we now have the stellar models, and also for each stellar model, we have computed their individual seismic frequencies uh, using the gyro oscillation code. Now, with this, we have all the stellar, uh, all the stellar models. Now we want a sample of stars to, to, uh, to a sample of stars to characterize, and for that, we use some uh, stars from the Kepler legacy sample. We see stars observed by Kepler with the highest sig signal to noise. And also, we uh, use some stars studied by da Davis in 2016, which are, are also stars observed by Kepler, but these stars are expected to have exoplanets or, or, or orbit, orbit around them. Now, the sample that we select can, can be shown, uh, th their distribution are shown in this kill, kill diagram. And we, with all of this, we end up with a sample of 96 stars, which we use uh, from them. We use their effective temperature, iron content, new mass, and their individual individual seismic frequencies to in the optimization process. Uh, so we infer their, uh, their stellar properties in, in both grids and. For, for the infer in, for the inference, we use the, the aim optimization for the aims optimization code to obtain the, the results for mass radius and age for both grids and we compare between uh, between the, the results between the two grids where between the two yeah we compare the results between the two grids using the grid without to went missing as a, uh, as a as a reference and we can see the, the results in, in these plots where we show the results for mass, radius, and age, uh, for mass, radius, and age, where the blue line indicates the, uh, the bias of our sample, and the blue region indicates the one sigma deviation, one sigma deviation of, of, uh, of our sample. And each point is color coded to the respective reference mass that we obtained during the optimization process. Uh, the, the, main, the main result that we can see that is that as the stellar mass increases, we see that the, there is an increase of the dispersion for, for, uh, for, uh, in our results, especially if uh, we can see the, this the dispersion increase in, in, in the stellar age that we obtain. And this can be explained that for, for the, low, the lower mass stars, the effects of the transmission are, are negligible because the, the effects of instrument mission will be well within the convective envelope, which is already a full homogenized zone that uh, which uh, neglect the effects of adding instrument missing. So, uh, so the mo models with instrument missing 
uh, with tobacconism are expected to have more or less the same fees in, with the models that don't have uh, tobacconism because we expect um, we expect the, the models without tobacconism, uh, the majority of them present atomic diffusion, uh, pre uh, the present atomic diffusion. So we expect to have more or less the same physics. So we expect to have a less, uh, uh, we expect to less uh, have a less difference in the results that we obtain. But for the more massive stars, like for the F-type stars, we see that the impact of uh, adding to red missing uh, uh, already is not the impact of adding uh, to red missing is not negligible, and we can see that the. Uh, because adding to, because of the use of direct missing will allow us to use the uh, atomic atomic uh, atomic diffusion, uh, which allow us to use atomic diffusion without uh, having the problems of over depletion. And for the uh, the for the stars that don't have uh, direct missing, we need to ne ne for the majority of them we need to neglect atomic diffusion to uh, to avoid the, the over variation at the stellar surface. And these differences that we see are caused are, call, uh, are caused by the uh, by neglecting the effects of atomic uh, for of atomic diffusion because atomic diffusion have a dire direct impact in the stellar evolution and uh, and uh, have a direct impact in the stellar evolution because it will affect directly the amendments of the stellar core which uh, the direct have an impact in the in the amendments of the in the stellar core, which will affect the time that the, these stars spend spend during the main sequence, will will which will have a direct impact in the the results that we obtain for the different stellar parameters. So now this is what I have performed uh, prefer the results that I have uh, with to red missing and uh, the work that I have been doing with to red missing and. Uh, now I will show a little bit what I have. I am currently working, which is now I want to explore, uh, explore a way, uh, a, a better way to uh, to try to reproduce the the, chem the chemical evolution for the different elements. Like uh, with on my term, like uh, with my calibration to make missing, we cannot reproduce the evolution of calcium and probably. Other, uh, and other elements, and now I want to reproduce th this evolution. And for that, I need to include rel relative acceleration. But as I have uh, sh uh, said, relative acceleration is too much computational demanding. So I need to, to add a more efficient way to compute rel the relative accelerations. And, is, and it, this is uh, what I want to do. And uh, and now I want to implement a new way to compute relative acceleration, which is the single valve parameter or SVP method in, in MESA. So what is the, the what is this method? So SVP is a more efficient way to calculate relative accelerations than the one that is used currently in MESA. So uh, currently, uh, currently in MESA. And the, the and SVP is more efficient because it is an approximation that does not need to take in consideration all the, the detailed atomic da data that is that is a computational uh, uh, too, too much computational demand. So the, because of the neglecting uh, or don't take in consideration this, uh, the computation will be much 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 faster. Much, much, it will much faster. Uh, will it, it will speed the computation uh, computation the for. It will speed the computation. Uh, however, because uh, SCP it, it is approximation, this this will indicate that uh, SCP will have some lim limitations, especially for the mass that we can uh, for the stellar mass that we can uh, can use for uh, can use in the stellar models, and also in the the stage of evolution. Uh, nevertheless, for the the stars that we want to study, uh, study which is F-type stars in the main sequence, uh, in the main sequence, so the limitations are negligible and are negligible, so they will don't impact uh, what we want to study. So the implementation of, of SVP will be a step further in the understand of the uh, a step further for in the understand of the stellar, stellar evolution in, in the stellar model. So now we want to implement uh, SVP, and for that we use the last updated version that we have uh, publicly uh, available. And 
And now I will show some um, the preliminary results that I obtained with, with the, the implementation of SVP. In here, we can see the SGI diagram of some evolutionary tracks, where in, in black, uh, we show the tracks with uh, the default reddit oscillation. In, in purple, uh, we show the, the results with our cal cal calibrated true rate missing, and in, in orange, the, the ones that uh, the ones that we it use relative restoration with the new implementation of SVP. In the evolutionary, in the evolutionary tracks, we don't see a significant difference between the in the evolutions when you consider the default case or or SVP. But the main difference is not in in the evolution, but uh, is it is in the computational time that MESA takes to compute evolutionary tracks from the main, uh, from the ZEMS to to the bottom of the, the red giant stage. So in here, you can see some of the computational types that we estimated. With the default uh, relative acceleration, we see that uh, the mean time of computation of a stellar, of a evolutionary track uh, spends about, uh, of about six hours. And we can reduce this time if we use our, our calibration of the rent missing. And we see that we pass from the, the six hours to about 13 minutes of, of computation. So our, our calibration of the rent missing will be much fast, uh, much fast, and also include a phase of relative acceleration in IRO. However, as I say that uh, my cal calibration is not good for uh, for a chemical characterization, so you, we want to introduce the relative acceleration. And now we want to see see what uh, are the effects of adding uh, the uh, or the the effects of adding SVP. And we see that we can pass from the six hours to about 20 minutes of computation if we use uh, SVP. So this indicates that we'll have a more reasonable time of computation with, uh, when we add the SVP. So, so with, uh, with SVP. So the use of uh, the SVP approximation will, al uh, will allow us the computation of large number of stellar models that are necessary in the char characterization of real stars. However, uh, however, this is the computational type, but we need to see how uh, SCP will affect the uh, the chemical evolution in, in this type uh, in this type of star. So we can see the chemical evolution of some elements in here. In here, they, uh, the chemical evolution for one solar mass star, and we see that the difference between the the there is no difference between the the, the default relative acceleration and the and the SCP method. In the chemical evolution, in the chemical evolution for this type of star, but we want to study is the in F type size in F type size because is where radiative acceleration will be more it will be more significant have a more significant impact uh, have a more significant impact and we can see here the, the evolution of the chemical evolution for 1.4 solar mass. And for the majority of the elements, we don't see a, a big difference between SCP and the default case of red evaceration. But I want to note is for the evolution of calcium, where my two went missing, uh, where my true, uh, where my two calibration of two went missing cannot reproduce the evolution of of the, the of this element. And we see that with SVP, we can have a more uh, close. A more close evolution of the calcium at the surface, the calcium at the surface, with the, with the case of this element, with, with the default case of relative acceleration. So, the, the, well, the, the results that I show you with SVP are still a work in progress, and I still want to, to study the potential of using. Uh, Using SVP and also investigate the, the limitation that I have with uh, with this uh, approximation, and this uh, and this is everything that I have uh, done, uh, done until uh, what this is everything uh, that I have been done until now. And in, in here you can see the summary of my uh, my presentation. But what I want to, you to focus is, is the last point, it, and it is that. All the codes that are implemented in MESA, like the implementation of SCP and the implementation of two missing, I will I want to make made available to, to the public to be used for to be used for for everyone that that wanted to use the, the 
that want to use all the 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 codes that uh, I use. Uh, the, all the codes, all the codes that I use to obtain the, these results. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I uh, I will I like to hear it and try to answer it. Thank you. Okay, no, no. Thank you very much. Take a deep breath, relax. So um, if you have any questions, I would ask you to um, to use the raising the raise hand functionality. Okay, and I'll just be taking your questions and uh, by as they start showing up. So, but, so while people think about something to ask, let me ask you, Nunu, what's so special about calcium, right? So your turbulent mixing implementation leads to this um, over depletion. When you apply the SVP, it, it, it does not. So what's, what's going on when you, when you implement your, um, your, your turbulent mixing in your original implementation? What's so special about, about it? Okay, so the like uh, so uh, so when uh, I use the turbine mixing, let me okay like like uh, I use the turbine mixing, I can reach the uh, almost nice more the the region that uh, I right below of the convective envelope. So it uh, like adding to my mixing is like extending the the convective the convective envelope. What happened is, is that uh, relative oscillations are different for the different elements. So, for like for the iron content, when I extend the, these uh, these uh, these homogeneous zone, it will reach a zone that uh, this element will be depleted. It, it will be, uh, it will be which will be depleted. So we see this effect of depletion. For for the case of calcium, we don't see that because for when I don't add uh, to when I don't add to red missing, this, this element will be in a zone where it is deplete, depleted. But adding the turbine missing, I extend the, the I extend the the, zone, the homogenized zone, and it will reach uh, an accumulation zone of these elements. So, and because of that, we see the this accumulation, uh, this, or this accumulation at uh, or basically this. Non the non depletion of this element at the at this region. So, is because relative oscillation will create uh, uh, zones that uh, the element will be accumulated or depleted. Or so, and adding that to my to my piecing, I will reach the as a zone that uh, these elements should be accumulated. Basically. Okay. Thank you very much. So I, I see a hand raised. Joey, go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. So this is uh, Joey Mombach from the uh, University of Toulouse. Um, I was wondering if you had a look at the latest uh, MESA version. So there have been huge improvements on the computation time uh, uh, of radiative acceleration. So like even if you um, run it on like a large number of cores, you can probably knock down that you know, five, six hours to about half an hour. Yeah, uh, I have a look at it. I wanted to, I still wanted to compute models for myself and try to implement their SAP to see what is the difference of using SAP. But uh, the paper that uh, from Me the last paper of MESA indicates that we expect a reduction of uh, or a speed, of, uh, a speed up of uh, about five times in the computation. So as I see the default, the method, the method version that I use is about uh, six, uh, six hours. So uh, uh, about uh, five hours and 50, uh, 50, 50, 50, 55 minutes. And I expect a reduction of one hour and one hour for, for its, uh, for, for its uh, stellar, stellar model. Um, okay, yeah, it's, uh, Will yeah, but it also benefits on how many cores you use. So if you use some more uh, parallel cores, it will go uh, much faster. Yeah, I'll, I'll also it will depend the the, the number of cores that I use. Also, and also which physics that I use. If I I will want to use uh, probably add rotation, add, add other physics. This time also will will be affected. So I will extend the, the time of computation. So. We want, what I want to do is reduce ma at maximum the computation of relative oscillation. So, is what I, I know, uh, and still, 
probably it's, be be it's better to use the default uh, case of uh, MES because it will it it will be a less uh, a less approximated case. But if we want to to use or to uh, to have a more faster uh, computation of relative acceleration and uh, and have good results, we need to use a more efficient way. Uh, and SCP allows us allows that, and uh, we. And we still present uh, still good results that are uh, accurate enough to characterize stars. Uh, yeah, I have a follow-up question. So, what do you do with the opacity? Do you take the local mixture into account for that as well? Uh, for the opacities uh, in the in the SCP, I I created a way to or at least uh, the SCP. Uh, because of uh, can uh, yeah, because of uh, because they can uh, don't need to consider all the, the detailed atomic data and they they will tabulate uh, these atomic data by six parameters is like uh, it will take the consideration of the mono monochromatic opacity in these parameters so I need I can. Neglect the effect or neglect the effects of adding the monochromatic opacities in in the in the computation. We we'll, yeah we can neglect the, the the effects of adding the monochromatic opacities in the computation, which is the the main culprit to to extend the, the computational time. And because of that, they will allow us to use the opal or p opacities. Opacity uh, tables that uh, don't need to be computed at uh, each. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the step. for the radiative acceleration, but also for the computation of the Rosland mean opacity. I mean, uh, do you uh, do you uh, anything uh, special to that? If you SCP the, don't uh, need to take uh, in consideration the the Rosland mean opacity. So. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. But yeah, do do keep in mind that you change it when you use uh, yeah. atomic diffusion. Yeah, that, that's then your, true. your radius might change, and therefore also yeah. the Esprin Russell diagram or the evolution tracks. I mean, yeah, probably it's because yeah. of that that we see a small difference. But uh, still, is is uh, probably the the errors that we, or the inaccuracy that we have are more or less negligible for, for now. Yeah, yeah, but they keep in mind that you do not compute them consistently the Rosland mean opacity. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that yeah, might that's change true. The radius. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Thanks. Okay, so thank you, Joe. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Vicky. I see that you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Um, very nice talk. Uh, very thank interesting you. as well. And I apologize if my questions, I have actually two, were answered in the first five minutes. I was a bit late. I had another meeting. So no uh, the first question um, is I was wondering. Have you tried or are you planning to test your models on AM and the FEM stars, which you know have showed these chemical abundances related to gravitational settling and radiative levitation at the slightly higher mass, higher masses like 1.5, 1.4 plus? Uh, until now, we don't have plans. So we are planning for uh, study at least F type stars and uh, stars. Uh, GK and F type stars. So basically, probably not uh, and not anytime soon. Okay, mm -hmm. not anytime soon. But uh, it will be interesting to see if uh, because uh, that stars start to present some chemical peculiarity uh, exactly. aspects. Uh, aspects. So probably uh, see if my models can reproduce these chemical peculiarities. It will be good to test uh, in real science. Uh, until I now. think it would be very interesting because that this is where we know that that if, uh, gravitational selling and radiative levitation is really very important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so it would be lovely to see that. My other question is, especially for the higher mass stars, and I am aware that for maybe the solar-like stars in the sense of mass, like one solar mass, this might not be as relevant. But to what extent would um, rotation add extra mixing that you're not taking into account here? Sorry? So to what extent would rotation, uh, more rapid rotation perhaps, add extra mixing that you are not taking into account here? Mm. So I'm coming from the higher mass stars. Maybe this yeah, question yeah. is less relevant in your case, but 
uh, rotation, at least in eta A and F stars, is known to to mix the environment, right? So I wonder yeah, yeah. if if for the 1.4 solar masses, for example, where the rotation can be become moderate, if if yeah. that can ex add extra mixing. Yeah, it can add uh, extra mixing. And uh, the studies that I read or the state of art that I read about domain mixing, normally domain mixing is used to calibrate the effects of rotation in, in these models, uh, mm -hmm. in these stars. So basically, pro probably I should uh, look a little bit more about uh, rotation and uh, to see if uh, there is other ways to implement rotation and uh, mixing in, in these stars. But I know that uh, turret missing, turret missing is used to calibrate the effects of rotation and all the chemical uh, And okay. uh, a lot of students use turret missing to calibrate the, the effects of rotation. So uh, I expect my calibration should also include the effects of uh, rotation in the, in the mixing. Okay, good, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, Morgan, I saw your hand raised uh, earlier on. Anything you want to add? Uh, yes. It, uh, hello, everybody. So it was just a comment uh, about Joey's questions about the impact of the Rosland mean opacity. So here, uh, because we include turbulent mixing, then the abundance variations are very, very small or much smaller than when we include only atomic diffusion. And so the mixture is uh, almost similar to the initial one. So we are close to the solar case, let's say. So, and as in the solar case, we know that we can use a standard opacity table. So in this case, we tested that it has almost no impact on the structure between using, uh, recomputing the Rosland mean opacity or using standard tables. Okay, thank you, Morgan. Um, so I don't see any more hands raised. Uh, so in if that's the case, if there are no more questions, I think we can finish here. Yes. So let us thank Nuno again. Thank you very much, Nuno. Um, thank you. And for those of you uh, that like attending these sessions uh, in a couple of weeks, I, I believe we will reconvene Okay, with one more uh, session. We are almost at the end of the Good Vibes third season. So keep tuning in. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah.